And now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. Welcome, 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 welcome party people. This is DFW Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. We're talking all things DFW residential real estate. And I hope you're with us every Saturday at 3 p.m. right here on WBAP. If not, I hope you're checking out the podcast, DFW Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremonti, where we're giving you not only uh, recent show episodes, uh, but some oldies, some of the uh, rocking oldies of uh, the show, as well as from time to time, surprising extra bonus nuggets. So check out the podcast, tune in every week, and we'll do what we're about to do right now, which is talk about DFW real estate in ways that would help you as a homeowner or a buyer or a seller, and let's add investor because investors are buyers and sellers with slightly different motivations, but buyers and sellers nonetheless. If you're interested in doing any of those things at all, the best next step is to go to ToddTremontiTeam.com, click any button, fill out any form, call or text any phone number, and uh, let us know how we can help. We'd be thrilled to help you whether there's there's a commission in it for us or not. We'd love to add some value to your life. Now, if you'd rather contact us immediately, contact us right now at 214-310-0008. Call or text 214-310-0008. The first segment's always brought to you by Patrick Glaros and his mortgage team over at Cardinal Financial. That's patrickglaros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com for all of your mortgage needs. Now, producer Courtney has got a microphone once again. The Yanni Donnie, the English wonders off frolicking about the Hawaiian Islands without us and just sending pictures of dirt baggery is showing us happy children and delicious meals. Convertibles. Yeah, take your convertible. Honestly, they're... All um, its horsepower. They're more fun as an idea. Once you actually get in it, you think... This was a poor choice. Yeah, this costs twice as much money for <laughs> half as much car, and my kids have luggage on their faces. It's only fun if you're driving it by yourself. Yeah. I've tried this. And I actually probably prefer uh, a convertible in the fall. Oh. Turn the heater on. Ooh. Cold air coming yes. in from the outside. It's like sitting around a fire. It's legit. <laughs> legit. Okay, so I guess I want to hear from you today about like motivation, why it's so important to understand why we are buying or selling. There's something always deeper, it's layered, and maybe we're not aware of this about ourselves. Listen, DFW friends, it's not about your questions right now. It's about what Courtney wants You know, to I love hear. to have the deep talk. Okay. Well, it's interesting that you say this. You've been around us long enough now to know that this is how I roll. Um, sort of obsessed with psychology, human behavior, why we do what we do. And I think that's one of the reasons we've we've had the 20 years of growth we have and 700 plus five-star Google reviews. We really do operate on this level of, hey, you know, I want to buy a three-bed, two-bath house. Okay, let's talk about why for a minute. Well, maybe you don't need three bedrooms. Maybe you need four. Maybe you should wait a while. Maybe, you know. It is fascinating how it is sort of a therapist position. Yeah, we were talking yesterday uh, about good agents have to do that well. You can be like, I know contracts and I know pricing, but if you can't help people through one of the most emotionally challenging times of their life, which it, if you've done it, you know exactly what I mean. If you've never bought and sold a home, that might not make sense to you, but when you move your home, your family, you're changing the environment of your marriage, your parenting, your eating, your exercising, your sleeping, your recreation, your homework, how you drive to church, how you drive to work, where you go grocery shop. Like it is a upheaval of life, not even to mention the massive, regardless of what your price range is relative to your life, it's usually a massive financial move. That's going to stir up some thoughts and feelings. And so it is a deeply emotional, challenging, thought-provoking time. And those agents that operate purely on a transactional basis, they miss most of that. Doesn't mean they're bad people. They're just not 
world class. They're not seeing it from all levels. And I'm not, I'm not saying we have everything perfect either. I certainly think it's as good as it can be at the moment, but just because of my obsession with that from, you know, years and years and years ago, being a psychology major in college and reading every book I can get my hands on, on just the human behavioral approach, why we do what we do, how we love, why we fight, how we make decisions, how we build wealth, how we think about real estate, how we think about jobs, you know, the, the, the answer to your question, and there are many questions layered within it, there, there's an ugly thing that agents say in our business, which is buyers are liars and sellers are worse. And what they're saying, what that sentence represents is that buyers don't know what they want. Like the most jaded real estate agent would say buyers are liars. But what that means is a lot of times buyers will say something and then that doesn't end up being what they do. They're not, in my opinion, they're rarely deliberately lying. They just haven't answered this question. Why am I buying? Why do I want a larger home? Why do we want to be in that neighborhood? Why do I not like the one I already have? Why do I hate renting? You know, people are responsive to the group think that we talked about last week on the show. They're responsive to the assumption of what am I supposed to do next in this stage of life? Am I supposed to just go from an apartment to a small house and from a small house to a big house and from a big house to a bigger house and then later from the bigger house to a smaller house and then from the smaller house to a retirement home and then, you know, to the graveyard. That's kind of a sad story, but, you know, just, that's what everyone else does. So that's what I'm supposed to do. And what we try to do here at the Touch Your Money Home Selling Team and what I help try to help train agents all over the country to do is slow down a little bit before you go speed up and find out what really truly is important to someone and, and really help them answer questions that they haven't even asked themselves yet. I know that sounds a little funky, maybe even a little woo-woo, but we're just talking about... I love woo-woo. <laughs> what we're talking about though is you know, did you call a real estate agent because you're, you're going to have a baby and now you need more house because that's kind of what everybody does. Or have you really thought through that? And now the real reason you want to buy a house, yes, it's because you would like more space, but it's also because you want to provide for your family, what your parents never provided for you in your whole life. You've really lived kind of on this underlying quest to be a better provider and create more safety and continuity in the home because you're still a little bit angry about growing up without that. Like, whoa, that's a very different reason that you might be buying a home right now. Or because um, you have this deep, 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 deep desire to be a generous giver of dinners and gifts and checks and financial resources and creating a safe engaging, comfortable, cozy place for people to be. And you're not currently living in that place. And it's, it feels like why God put you on this earth to go and help do that. And you haven't fully figured it out, but there's a tugging inside of you. And if we could help you figure that out, you might really, really come to life and moving out of your three bedroom into a five bedroom with one from one living space to two or three living spaces, you start to come to life and be who you feel like you were meant to be. Once you know that with more clarity, we can get this right more likely and we can help you go, well, that one is five bedrooms, but I don't think it lines up with what you're dreaming about. This other five bedroom is more of that. And now we can help you better achieve that dream or that purpose or that goal, whether it's wealth building or impact or family or safety, sometimes right or wrong, it's proving someone wrong that said, you'll never make it that you'll never live there. You'll never have that. I'm not saying that's the best motivator, but it can, it can sometimes get us over the hump of where we were to where we want to be. So those are just a few of the thoughts of what actually drives buyers and sellers. Now to give you a distinguishing factor of how buyers and sellers operate very differently on the average buyers do tend to be way more emotional. They're aspirational. They're dreaming of what the new life is, more parties, more room for the kids, you know, a bigger laundry room, more room to park the cars and store things. I want, I want, I want, I need, I can see my life with that. Sellers tend to be wildly more analytical. I put that in my spreadsheet. How much is that going to cost? How much am I going to walk away with? How much is it going to cost to give them what they're asking for? No one ever did that for me. I don't want to pay for that for them. So Everyone doesn't fit in the perfect stereotype, but generally speaking, 
buyers are more emotional and aspirational. Sellers are more analytical and more critical. So that's some of the groundwork of why people do what they do, why they often shouldn't do what they have been doing and what their neighbors are doing, and why sometimes there is a much better reason for some than others. I hope that makes sense. I do want to point people to PMR Roofing. We're heading into hail season, also uh, normally referred to as spring here in Texas. Uh, but if you don't know the current condition of your roof and you don't know what you would do if something would happen and you haven't had somebody up on your roof in the last two years letting you know exactly what you're dealing with, be prepared. As the spring rains come, you don't want to have a small leak turn into a massive leak or turn into a complete remodel of your bedrooms and your kitchen because now your house is full of water. Reach out to PMR Roofing. Make sure you're in really good shape. And by all means, if you know you've been hit by hail or heavy wind or heavy rain, that's who I call. That's who you should call. PMRRoofing.com or 214-957-0839. Ask for our buddy Jordan. Tell him Todd Tremonti sent you. Do you have any advice for how we can understand this, these motivations about ourselves? Yes, but it's very, very difficult to do yourself, which is why I think the best advice is to find someone that you trust with a track record of actually caring for people and not just like putting signs in the yard and have them help you. I am a consultant as a profession, right? Like, so I coach and lead and train and create opportunities for our agents here in the Tatramani Home Selling Team offices, Richardson and Fort Worth. And then I also help you know, depending on how you look at it, hundreds, if not thousands of agents all over the United States and Canada think through how they also help their clients do this. And I can see the issues and the needs in their businesses, these other agents, way better than I can see it in my own business, which is why I also go hire consultants and coaches to help me see the blind spots in my own life. Now, the more aware you become that you're kind of surface level answers to questions and your surface level reasons for why you do things are usually not actually the whole story. They're usually not very good quality answers or reasons. You can get better at this for yourself, but I strongly advise you invite any, a trusted, successful third party advisor, advocate, leader, guide, consultant, coach type person, which a great real estate agent can be for you if you're buying or selling and have them help you. I mean, really what you're trying to do is just ask yourself why over and over and over again. Why do we want a new house? Because we want more space. Why do we want more space? Because we're growing our family. Why are we growing our family? Because this is who we want to be. Why is that who you want to be? Because that's who I feel God created me to be. Okay, that's a pretty darn good reason. I feel like a newer, larger home would help me live out the purpose that God's given me. Now, that's an easy thing to rationalize. You know, I need 5,000 square feet to do that. Well, that need is probably the wrong word in that sentence. But if you were just trying to get more clarity right now on should I buy, should I invest, ask yourself why over and over and over until you're really happy with the answer, uh, even if it's a hard answer. But a full-time, really great, caring, concerned, and helpful expert of a real estate agent can help you get there much faster while also answering questions as to would this be smart? Would this be difficult? Would this be easier? Which one has a better financial return? Uh, which one is more available? Uh, which one has a better short-term return? I mean, you can dig into your thoughts and feelings a little bit better by just being honest with yourself. And you can also get all that done in 30 to 90 minutes with a true pro that does this all day, every day, and really cares about people. That's what we're offering at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. If we can help you gain clarity and understand why you're motivated to do something or not, or why it would be wise to buy, sell, invest, or not, we would be happy to do that for you. Call or text 214-310-0008 or go to toddtremontiteam.com. And if all else fails, just Google my name, get as close as you can to spelling Todd Tremonti right, and you'll connect with us. You can call, text, email, fill out a form, whatever's easiest for you, and we'll set up a time in the office or on Zoom to get you taken care of. Offices in Fort Worth and Richardson. It is an emotional process. And you're talking about tapping into that uh, to really understand yourself. 
is it wise to like let other family members and friends give a lot of input into uh when you're buying or selling and like what if they are also an agent like talk to me about all the voices no 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 it is not wise because because they they have motivations Well, and they don't have information and they have a lot of emotion. So, for example, the worst possible person at your home inspection is your father-in-law. Well, (laughs) let me be careful. Dads want to protect their kids, especially their single daughters, but dads want to protect all their kids. And so they then take their rare and unique real estate experiences and impose them on your home and get in the way most of the time occasionally a good thoughtful helpful dad's a great and great contributor to a process but like 997 out of a thousand times that's what we call a deal killer that's what we call someone who's going to create more anxiety and fear than you need now if you have a cruddy agent invite dad along because you need someone to look out for you but if you've sought wise counsel if you found a great leader that's full-time and dedicated that has other people technology and resources all aimed at your success to protect you that wants you to be happy and successful more than they need a commission. Then you've got an expert who does this. This is what they do is they protect and advocate. You don't want to call your friend who's an agent in another city or another town or another state and ask their opinion because they're not even in the same city, town or state, much less have all the information. I get that call a lot. Our agents get that call a lot from friends or family or neighbors who are in another city or in another state or in another area or another property type or whatever. And they're like, hey, what do you think about this? And I will always say, listen, I'm not really inclined to give you my opinion because I do not have all the facts and I don't know exactly what all you and your agent have discussed and what you know and what's going on. Generally speaking, this is normal and this is not. This is legal and this is not, but you might need to seek out an attorney. You might need to talk more deeply with your agent. It is not wise, though, to bring in a lot of people who don't have all the information, who might be emotionally charged, to be your counsel. It is wise to have wise counsel. So, you know, if you're a husband and wife or two sisters or partners of any other kind, you know, you should be talking and getting on the same page and you should have a great real estate leader who you trust, who's done this a lot, who actually will put your needs before their own, which is their fiduciary responsibility. That's like their ethical obligation. And who's willing to walk away from a transaction for your benefit and who's proven that in the past, not just sweet talking you into it but who's proven it in the past and you could talk to their past clients or see reviews or look them up online and see their track record or talk to their other team members, that kind of thing and be more confident that they're going to do that. Now that sounds like what a realtor would say, but I also think most people listening and watching understand that if dad doesn't know what all's going on or what's normal, um, he has a high likelihood of because he loves you and cares for you and wants to protect you actually getting in the way. Um, what we typically say is after we've done all the inspections and appraisals and gotten our information, having dad give his two cents is great because he does love you and he does want what's best for you, hopefully, or mom or uncle Rick or aunt Susan or grandpa or or your roommate from college or whatever, but make your own smart decision with a leader and an advocate and expert that you trust. And then before it's too late, seek out that other counsel. I'm not saying like, don't give them any input in your life. I'm saying you make the best decision for you with your expert and then potentially get a second and third opinion. Otherwise, I've seen that fail way, 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 way more often than not. It sounds like you're saying that I need to treat this role way more seriously. Like I would be interviewing a doctor or a lawyer in my life. Like that, this isn't just a, oh, my friend's a real estate agent. I want to help him out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also absolutely. So here's the deal. You don't go to your dentist and then ask your friend who's a welder, like, Hey, would you have done a filling on that or a cap? But people do that in real estate. It's like, Hey, when y'all bought a house last time, did y'all give a lease back? No, I don't want to give a lease back 
All my friends say they never gave anybody a lease back. Great. Well, your friends don't know what they're talking about. They bought four years ago. They bought in a different part of town. They bought at a different price point, And they didn't buy this house from this seller in this situation. Do your friends also know that the seller's giving you all the media room equipment? No, they didn't because you didn't think to tell them that because this isn't what you do. You hired me to lead you and guide you. Now, the real thing is most agents, actually almost no agents, are actually leading you and guiding you or, or telling you up front, this is how it works. So a great agent isn't going to run into this as much and their clients aren't going to run into this as much. But we're talking about how a buyer or a seller can make wise choices and protect themselves and achieve their dreams and all those things. And so if you can't trust your agent, you don't have the right agent. If you can't let them lead like you would let your attorney or your CPA or your dentist or your doctor or your surgeon or whatever the case is, then you haven't found the right agent. We had to let a client go this week. Got them I mean, in between you and me. I was happy to do it. But a client that just would not respect one of our agents who was, believe you me, our agent was the expert. The other person was just worked up and wanted what he wanted and didn't want to deal with reality um, and kept trying to tell our expert what to do. And so we just said, hey, we appreciate you. I think the best next step would be for you to find someone that you're more comfortable working with that you can trust more because you're not trusting the system. Then they tried to apologize and back out of it. And we, we parted ways respectfully and gracefully, but we have a waiting line of clients that do want a trusted leader and guide. We're not looking for people that want to tell us what to do, not because we're prideful dirtbags, but because we know what's best for the client and we don't want them to get in their own way and create an outcome that's less than that, which is harmful to all of us. Does that answer the question? Totally. It's a really beautiful experience when you can trust your real estate agent because you can just... Or your doctor, you know, it's, it's be it, it, led. It's yeah. Uh, and that doesn't mean you're mindless and they're not working with you. It goes back to like them helping you determine your real reasoning, your, your motivation, your needs, your wants, and what the differences in those two things are. Um, you do need insurance, whether you want it or not, and you need excellent coverage. And of course you want to save as much money as possible. DP Lambert at Goosehead Insurance is the person that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of our clients, team members, and friends are trusting with their home and auto insurance. dp.lambert at goosehead.com. That's dp.lambert at goosehead.com. Another interesting trust transition is the home warranty. A lot of people aren't really sure what a home warranty does or they've heard bad things. I'm here to tell you, certainly that first or second year in your home and by all means on all your investment properties, home warranties are an excellent investment where basically for the cost of a, a low, low annual policy, anytime something happens to the main systems in your house, you just call the home warranty company. They find the right vendor, send them out and you pay a small, basically like copay trip fee and they handle the rest. I think this is absolutely brilliant, absolutely wise for your first, second, third year in a house and any investment properties you have. And we love home serve home warranty. Go check them out at homeserve.com, home serve home warranty. Tell Christine that Todd and the team sent you homeserve.com. When we come right back, we'll talk a little bit more about real estate investing, talk about some really, really smart strategies for buyers and sellers in this current real estate market. We'll also be answering your questions. Check us out and all of our friends at toddtremonteteam.com. Bienvenidos muchachos. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Y muchachas. Everyone, everyone's welcome here. This was fun air in my head. Hey, welcome to the show, folks. Welcome back. Thanks for hanging out with us through the break. We got all kinds of stuffs to talk about. All things DFW real estate. Give us your questions. 214-310-0008. Or go to Todd Tremonti team. Dot com, or you just write my name in the Google box, the Bing box, the Jeeves box, the Duck Duck Go box, or any of the boxes on the internet. You type things in to get information. Just search Todd Tremonti. You'll find us. And we would really, 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 truly be honored to at least sit down with you and see if we're a fit to help you buy a home, sell a home, invest in a home, or maybe jump on a Zoom call and even just help you think through remodeling your kitchen or bathroom or converting your garage or putting in an outdoor kitchen or any of those things. We'd love to do that for you. ToddTremontiTeam.com. Or by now, you should have this phone number saved in your phone and you should call or text it 
for any of your real estate needs. 214-310-0008. First segment's brought to you by Patrick Glaros and the mortgage team over at Cardinal Financial. Patrick Glaros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, Patrick Glaros.com. Okay, producer Courtney is hyped. She's got a microphone, it's still unmuted. She's got questions, but I want to hear your questions also. I mean, these are your questions, but we want more of your questions. So text me, 214-310-0008. We'll ask them and we'll answer them right here on air, maybe on a YouTube video, or maybe we'll just text you back. Say, hey, here's a quick solution. Hope this helps. 214-310-0008. Nailed it. And that's what a jingle that would be. 214-310-0008. We don't even need to record it. Just right on the money. Todd, it's the... Y'all, DM. Courtney comes to work. And like all of us, she just takes a deep breath when she gets out of the car and, and, and leaves all of life's fun and baggage. And then she comes into this office and literally never, ever knows what's going to happen next. It's a wild ride. It's my goal that this is a joyful, happy place for you, but I can't, I often can't fathom what's going through your mind. You're like, hey, let's do another radio show. Lord knows what's going to happen next. I am so grateful to be here. I love Love working here. And if you are looking for a team that uh, loves having fun and works hard and makes things happen, I highly, highly recommend that you check out TTHST.info. Look what that turned into right there. Honestly, I T -T really mean it. TTHST, Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team, TTHST.info. Or just Google us and find the careers page on our website. We're growing our team. And hey, where do we have offices? In Richardson and Fort Worth. And where are, how many wonderful people are in, I mean, it doesn't matter. There's wonderful people in both places. We it's true. Them. And you want to work for us. I promise you. I promise what? you. But um, I will say, coming into this, and Todd likes this, you know, he really doesn't want you to know anything about real estate. And I knew nothing. Here I am. Oh, you mean when we hire someone. <laughs> I was like, but this is a whole show about telling people. <laughs> He trains you well, and I'm in the learning process. But that is why I feel like I don't know what's happening every single day. Because I'm like, what, what more is there to talk about? Agents are selling dozens of houses, and that's not your area. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that. We'll put you through our tr whole and agent training program. Yeah, because let's, I, guys, I'm going to become an agent. It's on my vision board. Oh, maybe. And I, I, I'm just primed and ready to be taught all about it. I'd be great. We talked about motivations in the first half of the show. I would be brilliant at helping people find their right home. Oh my gosh. I feel like that. But while we're on the topic and before we get to the questions, the dumbest thing people say, one of the dumbest things people say is, you're so outgoing. You should be a <laughs> real, real estate, estate agent. Isn't it just all about eye it's, contact? It's as if it's like, <laughs> if you're fun, you can also handle contracts and people's crazy mood swings and emotions and fears and oh housing codes and how things are built and made and what they cost and also financing and also marriages and schools. See, and I it's like if someone were to say to you, um, and people do say this, by the way, but, but not as much, like, you, you seem to like math, you know? You should be a quantum physician. Sure. Because they use some math. Are you kidding me? I just feel like there's so many feelings involved, and I would be so great at navigating I all love that. Feelings. I you do. love you love them. your feelings. Okay, where were we going with this thing before all that? Well, I'm not, I don't regret doing that. No, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say loves it's it. the DFW real estate show. And it so is. let's talk about Dallas and Fort Worth. And why? Careful, I mean, careful. I don't get Can't it. Get I don't chippy. get the Fort Worth thing. Oh, it's real. I don't get it. I keep trying. I go, go check the YouTube comments on our Fort Worth videos. <sighs> the people of Fort Worth, while I love them, they're wonderful people, but, and it's a big but. Let's be clear about this. I like big butts and I cannot <laughs> lie. She's singing now. Y'all have to mute that in my camera. Um, the people of Fort Worth want you to know that they are from Fort Worth, not Dallas. DFW, they can live with that. And I'm not saying all of them, I'm just saying almost all of them. 
they want you to know that Fort Worth is different, that it's got a bit of a smaller community vibe. Cowtown uh, is real for a lot of people, but not everybody's wearing boots and buckles, but they like... A lot of them are. They like this feeling of we're more caring and thoughtful, smaller town, a little bit more boutique in some ways, a little bit closer to the real country. Dallas is more of a rhinestone cowboy, football fan, cowboy type of vibe. And now, obviously, I'm not speaking for everybody. I'm just telling you, Fort Worth is awesome, but Fort Worth participates in DFW less than Dallas does. Now, let's be clear. Oh, I've never heard it put that way. The critique, I, the summary of the Fort Worth critique of Dallas would be that Dallas is trying to act like Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, kind of... $30,000 millionaire, trying to look wealthy, uh, trying to be cool. A lot of Teslas. Fort Worth's more authentic. I'm not saying this is true. I'm saying this is kind of the back and forth, the usually fun-loving competition, but some people are, like, pretty staunch about this stuff. I don't really sense or certainly haven't heard a whole lot of anti-Fort Worth sentiment from Dallas, but the other way, you betcha it's real. Now, I also think, some of those things are true. What made you open an office out there? We love the people of Fort Worth. And because we do a lot of radio stuff, people hear us, certainly the whole Metroplex up into Oklahoma and almost all the way to Houston. At night, you can hear us in California. That's a whole other conversation about how WBAP is a legacy station and doesn't have to power down at night. And at night, radio signals go farther, but we can talk more about that later. So the answer is we, people, the, pe the beautiful people of Fort Worth kept calling us and saying, yeah, we'd love to work with you. And we were either A, sending our people from Richardson to go all the way out there, or B, we were referring a lot of business to agents in Fort Worth that we liked, but that really didn't deliver as much value and as much uh, care and concern as we did. And so we weren't quite as comfortable with that. Uh, and so we started with Robert out there. He's still with the team seven, eight years later. Um, and we've added some really wonderful people. Mari's out there helping tons of people. And we're actually, we'd like to add two more people to our Fort Worth office and one to three new people in our Richardson office. So we can help them grow amazing lives and businesses and they can go help 20, 30, 40, 50 people a year, help them and discover what they love and want and build great lives as well. So how about that? What does Fort Worth offer residentially that Dallas doesn't? Um, the easiest answer to that is a lower price point. It, things are a little bit more affordable in Fort Worth. It is a smaller total geographic area. It's still a huge city compared to most cities in America. Still on the list of top, you know, biggest cities in uh, Texas. But Dallas is larger. And then, you know, where do you draw that line and pencil of like, what do you call Dallas? Now, if you just call like city limits, Dallas is bigger, bigger population. If you call Dallas like Dallas and Dallas suburbs, Dallas is a lot bigger. Uh, but Fort Worth certainly has its suburbs and things like that. But more affordable housing, a, a, a big town, but a smaller big town is a positive for a lot of people. You know, you have everything you could ever want and need. And the truth is, you know, kind of the secret around Dallas is not, very few of the actual major big league sports are in Dallas. You know, baseball's in Arlington. Mm -hmm. Football games are in Arlington. We do have the Mavericks right in Dallas, just, just you know, uptown, just north of downtown. Um, hockey also plays where the basketball team plays. Um, but Fort Worth is just, you know, in some ways closer to the Cowboys games and the Rangers games and Six Flags and some of those things than Dallas is in a lot of ways. It um, feels like you don't sacrifice a lot uh, as far as entertainment, no matter if yeah, you live in good, either. Good arts. I mean, Dallas has a little bit more just because everything's bigger and there's more of everything, more of most things. Um, you know, if you're an NBA fan, you know, Dallas has a team, Fort Worth doesn't. Um, if you're a hockey fan, Dallas has the professional team. The point is, though, Fort Worth's got a lot going for it. You have a lot of arts. You have a lot of history. You've got great food culture. You do have a unique, actual, you know, horses and cattle, cowboying, cowboy culture. Um, you know, Billy Bob's is kind of a big, big thing that Fort Worth is proud of as far as like a honky-tonk, but, you know, the biggest one in the world concerts, that kind of thing. The Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo is kind of unique to them. Dallas has a state fair, but if you're good looking for that true cowboy culture, Fort Worth's going to have more of that. Uh, Fort Worth gets into kind of the entry point to, you know, the hill country or, or a little bit more topography of the West. Um, 
a lot quicker. I mean, you get out to Weatherford and all of a sudden you're like, I'm not seeing a lot of that on the Dallas side. Now, you get out east of Dallas and you get out to the lakes and beyond and you start to get a more of an East Texas Piney Woods feel. So they each have positives. They're just different. So depending on what you like or love, you're going to like one more than the other. But they're both awesome. But that is kind of the, the, the you know, the again, I said fun loving kind of debate that tends to rattle around is around those items. But the job economy seems different to me. It just appears that way. That might not be true, but it well, just... Well, again, yes, it's true because the scale is larger on almost all of that. Are there more jobs in Dallas? Yes, but there's literally like more land, more buildings, more people, more school districts, more everything. So I don't know if that's a fair assessment, but if you're talking about the, the overall community that we might call Dallas, including lots of suburbs like Plano and Richardson and Mesquite and you know all, all those things, then yeah. I think the job opportunity environment is a little bit better, but people drive from Fort Worth to work in Dallas and drive from Dallas to work in Fort Worth. That's where we all come together and hug again as DFW, or as some are starting to say, Courtney, DFFW, because Frisco is blowing up. We're going to make a triangle. Uh, well, it mean, depends on who you count on the South. It might be a diamond, but yeah, oh. Frisco up North is exploding. Frisco McKinney, that corridor, uh, and again, you, you know, you can start counting Prosper and Salina and keep going north. But yes, the DFW thing uh, is Dallas-Fort Worth. The Metropolitan Statistical Area, most people will call an MSA, is actually Dal-Worthington, including oh. Arlington. And that's the one that I think you might see them try to loop Fort Worth, I mean, Frisco, into that. Like in Houston, it's basically like Houston, Sugar Land, Katy. It, it's grown over time. They're like, this, when we think about this population center, it includes these three blobs. I think we might quickly see a fourth blob up here. But the question was about Fort Worth. Fort Worth is awesome. Fort Worth likes to be known as just Fort Worth um, more than other parts of the Metroplex. And now you know. You also want to know about Keen Landscaping, especially as we're talking right now in early, early, early spring. Get the plants in the ground, get the flowers in the ground, get the trees trimmed, get the walkways laid down, get the patios built, get the landscape lighting in, and enjoy it. The remainder of spring, early summer, all of summer, early and all of fall, uh, enjoy it while you can. Go to keenlandscaping.com, K-E-A-N-E. -E. They'll help you with design, consultation, landscaping, construction, landscaping, maintenance, retaining walls, irrigation, tree work. They've literally done every one of those things for me, except for a retaining wall. Although maybe I should have them do a retaining wall because I'm a big fan of retaining walls, but keen landscaping, they can help you. I actually do love yards that have multiple levels because of what a retaining wall can do. My yard's pretty flat, but what do you mean? What can it do? Um, like I've looked at, actually looked at some property online in Frisco. They back up to some water sure. and they have three level backyards because otherwise it would have been a steep slope, but they've put a retaining wall in. So now I can actually use all of that on three levels. And I'm telling you, they're so freaking cool. Top levels like pool, right. second levels like gardens and landscaping. And that third level is like open green space out to the water. I mean, from an aerial view, that is stinking cool. From a lifestyle perspective, we'll use this one the most. So it's the closest down a few steps. We'll use that one the next most, and it's its own space. And we'll use this one the least, but it's got the most least maintenance needs and most access. Like Now you're making me want this. Pretty awesome. But my point is, if you have a bit of a slope, you should take advantage of a retaining wall so you get to use more of your yard. Mm. And then it's also, like as a design mentality, it creates defined spaces. So it's not like one big square and we eat over there and play over there and swim over there and jump at the trampoline over there. It's like one big space that we had to turn into three spaces so we could use it. But now it feels like this whole other discovery of my home and utility of my home. And it's the same amount of land, but keen landscaping can help you put in those retaining walls and everything else you need related to your landscaping. Go to keenlandscaping.com, K E A N E ask for Ben, tell them Todd sent you and if you forget all of that, just always go to ToddTremontyTeam.com, click the radio button, and you'll find all of our people. How about that? How about that? I liked it. I'm glad you liked it. I appreciate the immediate feedback. Uh, words of read. affirmation Great feed my read. soul. 
Is um, that your love language? It's you know, I like words. to celebrate a few of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, words. You know, as a as a confident adult male, I don't love that that's one of my love languages because it feels mm. I mean I feel needy in that mm-hmm. regard and I don't think I'm super needy. Mm-hmm. But I yeah, I like it. I like it when people say you're doing Same. a good job. Makes me want to do more of a good job, sure. you know? So that's just how it is. Um, hey, this doesn't sound exciting, but you need someone to check out your roof. You just do. If you don't, what could have been like a hundred dollar solution is probably going to turn into like a ten thousand dollar solution. I didn't make that, so that's just the way it is. We are heading into the most rainy and haily. I'm praying season for the of hail. the year. Now I that's need, a whole other conversation, I but let's have it roof. real quick. On behalf of PMR Roofing, <laughs> I need a new roof. Almost nobody in North Texas actually just goes and buys a new roof. They wait for hail. They pay their deductible and they get a new roof. Please. But in that process, if you get that wrong, you get scammed by an out-of-town roofer. Someone tells you they can do something that is not legal. Because they hustle. Because they come chase storms. And then you get scammed. You do get your roof, but you don't get a great roof. Uh, You probably get talked into doing something illegal. uh, And then when you need help, they're gone. That is not how it works with PMR Roofing. They will tell you the right thing. They will do the right thing. They will do it fairly and affordably, and they will be here later when you need them. PMRRoofing.com. Tell Jordan that Todd sent you. How about that? Another great read by Todd Tramonti. Make sure that when Ian gets back, you, you tell him that. All right, listen, if you don't know what your house is worth right now, like you can survive that, but it's not wise. Um, it's like investing in your retirement and just never checking the value of that. You need to know what your property is worth. Your property is a big part of your wealth building, your net worth. It's also one of your big um, financial burdens. It, it shouldn't be a burden to your lifestyle, but it could cause problems if you don't pay attention to it. So go to valuethishouse.com, find out what your house would sell for or rent for literally in less than one minute. Kids say literally a lot lately and they don't mean literally. I actually do mean literally. It will really truly be less than a minute. Go to valuethishouse.com, enter your basic information. It will pull local, real, recent sales, and it will give you a pretty accurate read of what your house would sell for or rent for. It'll also give you a confidence score, and if that score is not very high, you can email us back and say, hey, I would like a custom valuation. And then we'll call you, and we'll get a little bit more detailed information and manually go spend some time getting a true, awesome, deep dive value for you. But you can get the easy one. It's usually pretty darn accurate. And under a minute at valuethishouse.com. Okay, so we talked about Dallas and Fort Worth. And I'm just curious, just quickly, like, is there an area in between the two that you kind of have your eye on that you think people need to be paying attention to? Uh, I'm going to give you an answer you don't like at all. All of the areas in between are really, really growing right now. So Las Colinas, uh, when the Cowboys left, it kind of felt like, "Eh, what's there? It feels industrial. But the residential areas of Las Colinas are beautiful. They are. And they're kind of insulated. Like, Mm. they're kind of a little bit harder to get into, which is a good thing for where you live because you don't have a lot of that through traffic. Um, They're almost all, like, really well-maintained and landscaped. You've got, you know really clearly identified neighborhoods. Um, It's a great area. Uh, Irving has sort of lost its luster for some years and then brought in a lot of corporate uh, growth. Uh, So that's brought a lot more investment into the area. There's great food and restaurants and entertainment, really wonderful places to live. There's good golf in those areas. Even if you don't play golf, like having golf and country clubs bring a lot of other great things to the area. So H-E-B, not the grocery store, although I love the grocery store. Yeah. Hearst, Euless, Bedford, referred to as the H-E-B area, have just been steady winners for a long, long time. Uh, I would not sleep on those continuing to grow into great places to live. Um, Is there homes on land options in these spots? um, Yep. Um, Yeah. Hearst, Euless, Bedford, a lot. Irving, uh, Las Colinas, not quite so much. They're there, but not a lot of them. And then Grapevine. Big, big, big fan of Grapevine. Really like Grapevine, especially as when you say middle. North middle, I like Grapevine a lot. Named because of the Grapevines. 
Uh, really, really fun to go hang out downtown Grapevine, hit the shops, hit the wineries, uh, hit the restaurants, see some of the history and culture there. Some really cool like food court, food, um, food hall is the better word. Food court, you think mall. Food hall, you think really cool, trendy, awesome place to go. Cool food hall type stuff. Great stuff for the kids. Lots of seasonal holiday stuff there. Grapevine uh, claims, and I think it's probably right to say, uh, they're like the Christmas capital of America. You've got um, big, giant, awesome, really, really well done hotels and recreational stuff over there. I like Grapevine a lot. How about that? That was unprompted. No, that was good. I just want I just want to help people know where they need to be. You know what mistake we've made? Bent. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I mean, we've worked hard to, to do good things, but our YouTube channel and our show, uh, a lot of times we talk to people about the individual areas if they're from out of the area. Mm. But if they're from this area, we just assume they know about all these communities around them and people don't. Yeah. And why would they? Right. Yeah. Like unless you're a real estate agent and you're driving around all day helping people. So maybe we'll do a better job on the show going forward of like helping you understand the uniqueness and cool aspects of a lot of the different communities that make up DFW or Dal Worthington or even DFFW. I think that's a great idea because as a uh, resident of Dallas, I find myself just visiting the same places and going because, oh, there's Epic Water. We drive there and then we come back or yeah. like, but I don't know anything about the areas. Yeah. Or so, you don't go to Great Wolf Lodge and play there because you're local. Why would you do that? Right. right. But can't. really enjoy Ian this area. takes his family there all the time. Okay, so here's the deal, folks. Um, we want to know what you would like us to talk about on future shows on that note. So call or text 214-310-0008. Let us know what you'd like to talk, like to talk about, what you'd like to hear about. Tell us your questions, and we'll answer them for you. 214-310-0008. Or as always, go to toddtremonteteam.com. If you're thinking about buying, go to toddtremonteteam.com. If you're thinking about selling, Go to ToddTremonteTeam.com. If you're thinking about investing, go to ToddTremonteTeam.com. If you'd like to get in touch with any of the people we talk with or talk about here on the show. If we can ever help you buy, sell, or invest, you don't have to pay anything up front. We would be thrilled to sit down with you virtually by Zoom or in our Fort Worth office or our Richardson office and help you gain clarity, help you understand your core motivation, help you get a timeline in place. It's never too early to start that process. Most people wait too late. Tatramani team.com.